you said that it was just run, 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 run. Um, is it still kind of been that way? Yeah, yeah, you know, still running. You know, put the staff together, finalized that last week. Just straight up here to the combine. You know, look at the the next uh, great teacher Raiders. Um, I think it's good that you know myself, Patrick Graham, Luke, you know Tim McMahon, all get a chance to come up here and, and be around the players as much as possible. Yeah, the workouts are going to take care of itself, but I think for us to really get to know uh, the individuals, get to see them, speak to them, feel them, let them see us, ask them questions, and then hopefully repeat that process until we get to the draft. What were your uh, goals and objectives on, on putting together that first staff? And do you feel like, mm -hmm. how, that pro how do you feel the process went? Do you feel like you guys were able to meet? Yeah, it was a long process. I mean, I interviewed 11 offensive coordinators, five O-line coaches, six old quarterback coaches. <laughs> like, it was a lot of guys, man. It was it was a very thorough process. You know, I had all the coaches in there as well. They were involved in the process because I wanted to make sure not just for me, but it fit all of us. Um, I feel like we got a group of men that are uh, well-rounded, have a lot of ideas. Um, some guys have done it at the highest level as far as being a head coach for multiple years. Some guys just getting into the game. Um, I think I got to make some bold former players, as you see. I think we got seven yeah. I think, uh, on the staff. Um, but then also you got some that just you got some coaches that you know. When you look at them and you really, damn, how does that how does that match with what Luke is doing or what Patrick? Well, it might not match, but it's a it's an idea. It's something that we were either studying that we had talked about prior. That I said, you know what, let's let's pull from that system and let's see. At the end of the day, we're going to still structure everything the way that you know myself, Patrick, and Luke and McMahon sees it. But it's okay to have different ideas and think outside the box. For you, how important was it, AP, to get people? who would obviously respect your position as head coach, but weren't afraid to say, hey, I think we can look at other ways of doing things. Yeah, no, I, I, that's one thing I look for. I mean, it's not a dictatorship. I don't run that kind of program, and, and that's not how we are. And I'm not worried about other people um, speaking up or voicing their opinion. I want that. I don't want yes sirs around me. I want people to tell me when I'm right, when I'm wrong, come up with different ideas. Um, and I'm not... I'm think I'm good enough in my own skin where I'm not worried about having former head coaches in there. I'm not that doesn't bother me. That actually I don't know you know how that's a a negative. I think that's the total opposite. You know when you have the opportunity to bring in people like a Marvin Lewis, a Joe Philbin, you know to have Rob Bryan around, to have Coffin uh, still be on speed dial. Uh, that's man, that's that's invaluable. Uh, so for me, just putting that whole group together and then mixing them like we just talked about with other guys and and, and coming up with the ideas and really problem solvers. Because there's only a lot of things that happen over the next, <laughs> it's happening now at the combine. Um, things that happen over the next couple of weeks and months that I, I won't be prepared for and I won't know. And to get that heads up and get that in advance is, is really good for me. There's a lot of different flavors of quarterbacks that are gonna be in this combine. Is there a particular style that fits with what the Raiders want to do in your mind? Uh, I just want a leader. I want a guy that can lead, that wants to compete. I want a guy that's uh, not afraid of a challenge because this is a big challenge that we have in front of us, especially you got the world champs in our division again. Um, uh, you know what you got to deal with each and every <laughs> year as long as Patrick Mahomes is in that division. And I want somebody that says, you know what, I want to go for that challenge because that's the same way I look at it going against, you know, those four head, those other three head coaches in this division. Um, and then somebody that just wants to really compete. I, I want to see that competitive spirit in our quarterback. Um uh, a guy that, you know, when the game's on the line, you know, he, he wants the ball it, it, in different ways, either making the, the throws, doing it with his legs, or, you know, putting it in the right call. So those are the things I'm really looking for, those intangibles. Um, I don't want to go with the unknown. I want to go with a proven winner and somebody that knows what it's like to grind and go through some adversity because we're going to go through that. Speaking of the Chiefs, in your mind, how, how close do you feel this team is to be able to beat them consistently? Yeah, that's the key word, consistently. Exactly. Um, you can do it one time. It could be a one-hit wonder. Mm -hmm. I know that's what everybody expects us to do, but we're expecting to compete and try to build a team and a staff and a roster to do that. And, again, it's going to start with, you know, to be honest, it's, it's got to start with your defense because you got to you got to deal with the quarterback and the offensive coordinator and the head coach who are very good, the best of the best, man. Going to go down is probably gold jackets. You know, this is called a spade to spade. And um, how close are we? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have that answer today. Um, once the roster gets built and you see the staff work together, um, I think that's going to be the critical part about it. I think our mindset is there, though. I think we believe we can compete with them. We just got to go out there and do it.
when you say proven uh, on quarterback, uh, does that can you can you see that in a college quarterback uh, in terms of the, the, the proven to deal with adversity and things like that? Can that come from a college quarterback, or is it more of a veteran guy? Yeah, well, I think you want guys with a bunch of starts underneath their belt. You don't want a one hit wonder. You don't want a guy that had a one year success and say that's the guy. No, I think you want somebody that's been battle tested. Um, that, like I said, talked about it. He's been through adversity. Uh, that's had challenges. That had to either have a competition battle. He wasn't gonna just handed the keys day one. Uh, he's kind of went through that because that's gonna be a process here. Whatever we do, you know what I mean. I don't care if we're bringing a veteran or not. Aiden's our starter. They gotta beat out Aiden. <laughs> you know what I mean. That's the facts, and that's not that's not coaching talk. Shit, Aiden did a hell of a job, man. And uh, and the thing about it, he hasn't blinked with all this noise and all this stuff about the quarterback play. He just comes to work every day, works out, does his thing, and it's beautiful to see. Has the game changed at all where now you look at young quarterbacks in the draft and you look at more in terms of impact as opposed to maybe long-term potential? So you're talking about just strictly the draft? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would hope whoever we draft, that's the route we go. If that's who the starter becomes, you know. And if it, again, I'll go back if it's Aiden or if it's somebody we draft or we bring in. You don't want to put a Band-Aid at that position. Uh, that's, that's old, man. That's old. That's, I think the Raiders... We've seen that enough in this organization. And I know we've had Derek Carter for a bunch of years, but you know, after before him and after him, it's been a bunch of one stop guys. And I don't think any organization wants that. You want the face of your franchise to be the quarterback, to be that guy you can count on for the next two years. You've been through this process kinda of on the other side, going through, you know, pro days as a player and having to do these interviews. How unique of it of an experience to have to be on the other side now doing this as a coach? It's cool because I get to call their bluff. I knew when they BS me. So that's the best part of the interviews. We've been having a lot of fun with the guys in there because they come in there guarded. We got this booklet that got thousands of information, all these things that we know about the player already. And it's cool to sit there and watch and see if they're going to tell the truth, be blunt and honest, or try to you know guard themselves. And we've gotten both. You know, you got the guy that's just been so blunt. Like, okay, hold on, that's a little too much information. <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't need all that, bud. But then you got the other guy that's just like, nope. They ever did nothing wrong. Nope, nope. Like, come on, man. Like, you know, Mr. Perfect. And it's cool to kind of see through that. And it's funny that once we have a little bit more dialogue uh, throughout this process, they open up more and more. But, it, I mean, it's a very stressful time for these guys. I mean, multiple interviews. You're on a clock. You hear horns buzzing. People yelling down the halls. And some, it's really interesting to see who's, who can stay focused, you know, throughout this, this time period. And if, who takes it serious. You know what I mean? Because uh, these guys get drafted. But that don't mean they'll all be good pros. I mean, it's, that's, another, that's just one step of the process. So you look for the guys, like I said, that got that, that look in their eye. And you can really feel it. You can see the guys that's entitled, got NIL, which is an issue because uh, they come in already kind of privileged uh, in that sense. And they got money in the bank. But when I came to the league, I was broke. You know what I mean? So I, every little dollar I got, it meant something to me. These guys already got, got damn jewelry on and Louis Vuitton rocking his role already. So uh, just, just looking for the right, right fit for us. Sometimes you gotta to get what you want. You gotta go get it and be aggressive in getting it. Um, would you be open to uh, if you if you guys fall in love with one of those quarterbacks going up and and making it happen and giving up whatever it might take to to make it happen? Yeah, I'm sure that's something Telesco's already spoke about. But uh, that's my personality, as you guys all saw and witness. Uh, I'm a go getter, but you know, obviously, that's gotta be a collective agreement. Right. You are a guy. A lot of guys get your job and they almost become corporate. You're who you are and nothing changes you. Does that go back to your mom, your grandma? Where does that come from in you? Yeah, because when I leave the job, I'm going to be that guy I was before. I'm, this is a temporary seat. I'm not no fool. I got hired, I'm going to get fired. But the one thing ain't going to change about me is who I am. How I talk, how I walk, how I act. I don't miss my words. I don't bite my tongue. It is what it is. So like it, love it. I mean, it's just, I mean this is... I, no different. I told Mark Davis day one, man. This is me. I don't know what else you guys want. I mean, I tell everybody, like, it's, it's not a joke. It's not a gimmick. It's it's me. But, you know, and I think that's what people want to see. I mean, I've walked through the halls. I see all these, you know, head coaches and former players and scouts and coaches. And, you know, those are the same guys that either told me I couldn't do what I was going to do or I had my back. And um, I keep receipts. On offense, uh, you, know, you can have the quarterback and, and weapons, but you know it's tough to have success unless you had an offensive line in place. Um, where do you feel like you guys need to improve with that unit moving forward? Yeah, you, I mean, to me, how I would like to build this team, I think me and Telesco see the same way. It's got to be built in the trenches, man. I, I get it. We're going to get a skilled guy, get a quarterback. Hell, nobody blocking for it. What does it matter? 
So really, I'd love to see us just really be really sound up front, man. I thought our offensive line, the last uh, part of the season, did a hell of a job, man. I thought they, they got together, they, they battled. Uh, you had guys battling through injuries, and they didn't want to miss one snap, and they played for one another. But you want to have that consistent group each and every week, and then you want to have a core group of guys. Again, I was fortunate for the organization I played for that those guys played together for seven years consecutively, and that was impressive to see. And when you look at teams across the league, I know it's hard with free agency, but you'd like to see that. That group, because that's the most, that's the one position where you got the most players on the field at one time, right? Those five alignment. And most teams, when they have this, pretty goddamn good, regardless of who's that quarterback, that running back, because they set the tone. And I think our guys really took pride in that. Colton Miller did a hell of a job. Uh, Jermaine, Mumford, Dylan. I mean, those guys, man, they battled their ass off. And I know it's free agency. You don't know who's going to come back and go, but. Whoever we put in those places, man, that's the, going to be the mindset. And the front, and then on defense, listen, you know we got some ends, and them boys showed up, right? You know what you're going to give them, Max. Malcolm Koontz is coming to his own, and Tyree will be just fine. But just how good would it look if you just put a couple more pieces in the in the middle of that defense, man? And now Max doesn't have to run so far on the outside because <laughs> that quarterback, he can't, he can't step up no more. You know what I mean? Because you got the inside, you got pressure. And four. So I, I think for us, and that's my main focus, is really just building this team inside out. And I'd love to see us get some some badass dudes, man, that are heavy handed, physical, uh, that play the game the way that I see it being played. Do you see uh, Dylan as a guard in the long term, or does this look up, up in the air a little bit as far as where you're at? I think, I think Dylan can play any of those positions. I think it's all going to come based off of what we do with free agency in the draft, to be honest. But you saw a kid that fell in at center right away and did a hell of a job in those two games. Put him at guard, and I thought. <clears throat> Did a really good job of going against like the Chris Jones of the world. You know what I mean? Holding his own. You know, that's a tough matchup, but never blink, man. Never blink. So uh, it's good we have somebody that has that kind of position flex. Um, it gives us a lot of options. You called Josh Jacobs the heartbeat of the team. We asked Tom Telesco about bringing him back. He said, we want to prioritize bringing our guys back. How important is it to get JJ back? I love it, man. Two headed monster with him and White? Watch out. Just watch out. Like that's, and Josh, I have so much respect for Josh because the last four games he battled. Uh, he tried everything possible to play. Didn't work out. Didn't work out. But he tried to the very last game, man, to play. And he had a lot on the line. And that was unselfish of him to do, do that. And I really respect that and appreciate it. But at the end of the day, I know it's a business. I know he wants to get paid. I hope he gets paid as a Raider because I, I still believe that. Regardless if he's not here, man, he, he was one of my favorite players to watch, coach, and be around uh, because of his mindset. He is an alpha. He is what you want at running back. You know, He is that guy that... When he talks, people listen, and, and you respect that. And you watch the style of play, and it, it fits what we want to do. You can't go into a year with one quarterback, so obviously you have to add some. But my, my question is, every time you talk, you bring up Aiden. You believe in Aiden. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious, do you think some people overlook him? Yeah, I mean, because it's easy, because this is a hell of a draft class. <laughs> it's right. a really good free agent out there, too. But it's no different than at the Minnesota game. Everybody thought I should bench Aiden or do something else. I stuck with Aiden. I said that day one. You remember I said, going forward, we're going with Aiden. I didn't I don't I don't go back because of what everybody tells me to do or what they think I should do. You see the body of work each and every day. When you're around somebody you understand them a little bit more than when people just see him say on Sunday or at an appearance. I'm watching a gentleman who knows that he has a lot to work on. And the first thing he did after the season was over was get his butt right back in the building. First thing he did is when we got the staff was coming right up there and introduce himself. That's a pro. That's a pro, and it, it would be disrespectful for me to talk about anybody else other than Aiden. But Aiden does know there's competition. Mm -hmm. Devontae Adams knows there is competition. Max Crosby knows there is competition. So if you're going to do it with the quarterback, you got to do it with everybody. And that's one thing about this team is that they're very competitive. They understand this next man up mentality. I get the stars and all that, but hell, we're a production-based business. Tom Telesco mentioned yesterday – that one of the things that's impressed him is how many of the guys are in the building every day. <laughs> he says it talks about their commitment yeah. to their craft, but to their team. Could you talk about that, please? It's shocking. I mean, we're talking anywhere from 17 to 25 players since after the Super Bowl, each and every day. And I don't know why, but they seem to like to be around the building a little bit more. You know, they seem to understand what they can do to get better and help us get better and win. And I said this probably at my last press conference. There's some meat on the bone 
and guys felt like it was unfinished, unfinished business. The season ended, and they wanted more. And that mindset has carried over into some of our core guys. And our main guy who's here every day, Max Crosby at 6 a.m., which he was there today, they're following his lead. And that's good to see, man. And like I said, it goes back to even Aiden. Those guys are leading by example. And whoever we bring in this bad boy, they got to follow the lead or they got to get out. And that's just how we're going to roll. But it's really impressive to see that they want to be around the building. Because I know how I was when I was a player. When the season's over, I was getting the hell out of Dodge. Mm-hmm. I want I to get the furthest away from the coaches and the facility. And I think we create a culture and a fit at the building where it's okay to hang out. You know, we're not going to step on your toes. I, I, I give them away, see them. I don't, I don't check in and see what they're doing. Listen, man, at the end of the day, we're going to see the results when we get out there in the spring and more important when we get to training camp. As the coach of the Raiders, you have a pretty big microphone, and we saw what happened with the with the comments we talked about earlier. But you know, with the Patrick Mahomes rules, and when you see the reaction that some people may have taken that the wrong way, um, you know, uh, do you just kind of laugh because now people are actually keying in on everything that you say and and, and what what uh, Antonio Pierce has to say? I always heard good press, bad press, it's press. And if people want to talk about the Raiders in February, then we're doing something right. Even if they think it's wrong, they'll be right at some point. You mentioned, you mentioned Tyree. I know Max said he's been very tough on Tyree. As a coach, you got to love that, I'm sure. I'm glad yeah. you must some got rewarding you for Tyree in the long run. It is. It'd be good. You know, I, I know Tyree took some time. Think about it. He didn't have an offseason. Had surgery. Couldn't really work out. You know, boom, we throw him in a fire. He's not quite there yet. You know what I mean? And um, came on very strong at the end. And he, we talked about it. He said, hey, listen, I'm going to take some time. Go with my family, which I think he needs to. But the one thing I do know is that he's going to be back here early in March before we can start April 15th, and he's going to be with Max. And that's Max's number one job is to get and bring Tyree along. But that's also Tyree's job because we can want it, but Tyree got to want it as well. And I think he does because last year he got humbled. When you're the seventh pick overall and you don't have the year that he expected to have, and you hear all the outside noise, and he knows it wasn't good. It was, hell no, it was ugly. It wasn't pretty at the beginning, but that's okay. He worked on it. He worked on it. And you saw the improvement. And that's the one thing you can sit there and say, okay, there's a gleam, that, that little gleam of light that you think going forward that the light switch. And you never know when that's going to happen as a player, right? <clears throat> and especially as a rookie because they all come in, they're alphas, you know, they got money, like he says, 15 a.m. running and walking around. It's all good. But at the end of the day, it don't matter because if you don't produce on Sundays, nobody cares. One of the positions where you guys had the most movement last year was, was cornerback. Um, part of it was due to injury, performance, et cetera. How are you kind of viewing that position this offseason and potentially making some additions? Yeah, priority. I mean, I think you saw the addition of Jack Jones. <whistles> Big time. Good for us. Confidence, swag, anticipation. Lifted the whole group. And the defense. Nate Hobbs. If we could just keep him on the field for 17 games, come on. Probably one of the best star nickels that you'll get out there because, you know, he can cover, he's physical, he can tackle. Extremely competitive. I thought Amik did a good job. I know he's a free agent. You know, we'll see how that plays out. And then you look at JB, Bennett. You know, I mean, we threw him in the fire early. Started as a rookie. Was, I don't know, six, seven games. And then, you know, off and on after that with injuries. But his confidence came back at the end of the season. Didn't really get to show up on film. But we saw it in practice. Saw him the other day in the facility. Looks amazing. Um, so you're right. Yeah, do we got to add pieces? Yeah, we got to add pieces. And the pieces we want are guys that are, Want to compete? Short-term memory. We want the alphas, man. I want those guys out there that extremely confident. They got to be. They got to have short-term memory too now, because they don't get popped. They don't get popped. But you want those guys, man. That just, I want that challenge. I want Tay every day in practice. You know what I mean? I want to go against Trey Tucker. I want Jacoby. I, I want to go against that guy every day to get better. I want those guys. I don't want guys that's uh, coming in here to just uh, put on the logo or the silver and black and say, you know, I'm a Raider corner. Hell no. I want them to have that mindset that I'm gonna be the best and. Is that going to happen right away? No. But that group overall with who we got in that room is going to bring the best out of them. Every team, every franchise is different every year. But Jack Jones talked on Twitter the other day about um, people wanting him to go out and recruit free agents. But he said, I believe in the guys in this locker. I'm not going to go recruit anybody. Yeah. I mean, that's almost Antonio Pierce type swag, isn't it? Yeah, man. Listen, he. Jack is a loyal dude, man, as you guys have seen. Loyal player, lo- lo- loyal human being. And he loves his group. And like I said, he, when he came in, first and foremost, they put their arms around him. We need to love up Jack Jones. He had went through a little bit as well earlier on in his career. And he felt that love for those guys. So 
as a player, but they're brothers, you don't want to see them go anywhere else. And we don't either. But, you know, it's a business. You understand you're not going to be able to keep all your players because of financial situations. But to hear your guys, one, go to bat for coach, go to bat for one another, what does that tell you? Good. Tight-knit group, man. And that's why when people ask me why I talk or do what I do is because I'm backed up by 53 dogs. 53 dudes that's ready to freaking go to war. Still, in February. So we just got to temper it down a little bit too, AP as well. Yeah, I've been a lot of first since you took the job, whether it's putting together a staff, combine, having your first OTAs. Like, how are you approaching that? Because you haven't done it before. Are you, are you pulling from different places to try to learn the best approach for it? Are you just kind of feeling it out as you go? Like, what's your overall? Yeah, past experience, obviously. I go back, really, I'll go back to my playing days. What I liked as a player. Then you got to go to, what? The, okay, what's the CBA rules? What's new? Okay, what, what do you do now with all these different limitations that you have? And then also, you know, there's a reason why you brought in Marvin Lewis and Joe Philbin. You know, okay, let's all sit at this table. Let's put pen and paper. Let's come up with some different <laughs> ideas. Let's be creative as well. Let's try to mimic things that we can get better at come, say, August when we're in training camp or that, you know, happen to us in the season, situational football, things of that nature. So there's a lot of stuff that's going through that process. Um, I'm not going to mimic what we've done in the past because that's not what I was used to doing. Um, and that's not a knock to anybody. But, you know, you, this is your first time, like you said, to put your step on it. And, and there's certain things I want to emphasize and just try to build that throughout the off season. Um, I think we're going to have great participation. So then you also got to reward the guys, too. You got to be smart. We're not going to beat nobody in April, May, June, July. It's about just really, to me, just keep building this bad boy so tight where – as people poke holes into it or try to poke holes into what we're doing, they can't do it. And you mentioned cornerbacks like you were just talking about. But when you evaluate this draft class, what do you think is potentially the deepest position group coming out? It's a few. Man. I think the corner the corner group good. Quarterbacks pretty good. Um, o line, interior D line, pass rushers. I mean, this to be interested to be honest, there's you wish you had more picks. <laughs> You're like, damn. <laughs> but at the end, you got to be smart. And Telesco understands that. And he knows I am. I'm like, come on, man, can we get four more picks? But um, that's also what's good about free agency. You know, that comes first. So we'll be able to plug some of those holes. But it's a very talented group. The guys, the gentlemen that we've interviewed have done an outstanding job in that process of really speaking. Um, tell us who they are, what they know. These guys are being coached up well now. I tell you, that's the biggest difference. Goddamn. They know everything that's about to be asked. Like, they, they're sitting in our room and got, you know, all our questions. So that's cool. But I think the best part about it is just seeing these guys as eager that want to come out and really put on a show here at the Combine. And more importantly, we got some guys that say, man, I want to be a Raider. And that's, I like hearing that walk through the hall. I hear more Raider chants than I hear the other team. One of those quarterbacks you coached him, uh, at Arizona State, Jaden Daniels, he was there at the locker room uh, after your game, last game of the season against the Broncos. Uh, what, what are your thoughts uh, on Jaden, knowing him <clears throat> at Arizona State and then seeing what he did at LSU? Impressive. I mean, I thought he'd win the Heisman. That was my recruiting bitch. He'd win the Heisman. God damn, he won the Heisman. <laughs> that was cool. I'm like, did he call my name? I said, that's even cooler. Uh, <laughs> man, just proud of him. I, when, I, when I was recruiting Jay, 150 pounds wet, everyone was like, well, where are you getting this little skinny dude from, you know, San Bernardino? Uh, but I saw as a winner. I saw a guy that's really competitive. Always out to prove people wrong. Uh, been doubted his whole life because of size or certain attributes about him physically or mentally. And I think all he's done is prove people wrong. And it was good to watch him do it at the highest level of college football, the SEC, and dominate. It was impressive. What was it like meeting with him? And read that you guys had met with him. Now being the head coach of the Raiders, and he's a prospect that you never know how things might play out. But uh, how, what was that like? It's cool. This is cool going through the process. Like, it kind of reminds me of Jack Jones. I've known Jay since he was 14 years old. And I've known Jack since he was 13. Just watched him. Grew up to be a young man, and then obviously their number one goal is to be in the NFL. I just happen to be fortunate to be the head coach of the Raiders, and there could be a possibility, but we'll have to see. You, you, mentioned, more you, mentioned, the adversity. you mentioned the adversity that, that Jaden had to face before he became the Heisman Trophy winner. Did you see a little bit of yourself in him as well? Yeah, I think every player that, if I have a chance to pick, is going to have a little bit of AP in him. That just makes sense.